Hey guys, it's Jenny here. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. <sighs> if you can sense my growing irritation, that is because I have filmed this video three times now and my phone has died <sighs> on a full charge three times. So I've lost my footage three times. So we're just a little bit irritated right now. I'm now using my dad's phone to prevent this from happening again. So I swear to God, if he does not have enough storage and for some reason this video messes up, I'm going to lose it. So for your guys' entertainment, I am swallowing my pride and going through these books for the fourth time. So unfortunately, it's not an unboxing anymore. It's a haul technically because I unboxed it in three videos ago. Not only that but there's also other problems. But we are going to be unboxing my book outlet. That's my address. My Black Friday, we're gonna keep doing that. My Black Friday book outlet unboxing, which is about two weeks late, so. Um, and also I checked the receipt and um, there's supposed to be 13 books in here. There's actually supposed to be 14 books in here, but now there's only 13 because they decided not to give me my exclusive edition of Tower of Dawn that I ordered. Um, so, top touch for that. Um, see, they had it on my receipt, and but they don't say that they shipped it or charged me for it, which is complete BS because <sighs> there was about 40 something in stock when I ordered and the numbers weren't dwindling the whole 30 minutes I was on that website so thank you guys I'm really trying to be positive but <sighs> patience gets te gets tested and this is the fourth fourth time filming this video that takes like 15 minutes to film so I'm literally trying not to cry because I'm so irritated right now so we're just gonna get into this unboxing. So yay. Um, I'm getting so sick of reading these synopsises. <sighs> so the first book we have is called The Crying Rocks by Janet Taylor Lizelle, which is basically about a girl named Joelle who is adopted and she's always wondered where she comes from. Her adoptive family has no insight for her, but this boy in her class um, mentions that she resembles some of the in Native Americans at, in the, from the mural in the library. So he takes her to this mural and she has some hints of recognition. Uh, and, you know, she decides to, you know, look more into it. So they decide to travel to these crying rocks where the tribe that she believes she's from, um, you know, their spirits cry for their lost mothers. So they go on this adventure and, you know, try to find out more about her heritage. And this sounds right up my mom's alley, so I decided to pick it up for her. Um, she would love this. So this was $1.88. So for Black Friday, Book Outlet's whole entire website was 30% off on already discounted books. So the next book I got, um, I had actually, um, I was actually, I saw this on Witty Novels channel. And she kind of picked it up on a whim. Uh, yeah, she picked it up on a whim, she found it on her bookshelf, picked it up, and it ended up really surprising her and she cried a little bit, and that was Forgive Me, Leonard Peacock by Matthew Quick. And this is about a boy named Leonard Peacock who decides to kill his former best friend and himself on his birthday via a gun. Uh, so that's literally all the synopsis I give you, it's like so short. Um... It says maybe one day he'll believe that being different is okay, important even, but not today. So I feel like this is going to hit me really, really hard. Um, and this was also only $1.88. Um, so next we have The Looking Glass Wars by Frank Better. Um, this is an Alice in Wonderland retelling, which is really all I needed to pick it up. But once I read the synopsis, I was even more pleased. Um, so it says the myth was that Alice Little was an ordinary girl who stepped through the looking glass and entered a fairy tale world invented by Lewis Carroll in his famous storybook. The truth is that Wonderland is real. Alice Hart is the heir to the throne until her murderous Aunt Red steals her crown and kills her parents. To escape her aunt and her body, Alice and her bodyguard Hatter Madigan must flee to our world through the pool of tears. But in the pool, Alice and Hatter are separated 
Lost and alone in Victorian London, Alice is befriended by an aspiring author to whom she tells the violent, heartbreaking story of her young life, but he gets the story all wrong. Hatter Madigan knows the truth only too well and he is searching every corner of our world to find the lost princess and return her to Wonderland so she may battle red for her rightful place as the Queen of Hearts. So this one's really good. I thought it sounded like it resembled the Queen of Hearts trilogy by Colleen Oakes, so I'm always a sucker for Alice in Wonderland retellings. Um, this was only... Um, 2.23. Next we have Ruthless by Carolyn Lee Adams. This is a thriller I've been wanting to pick up for a while. So the front says she was supposed to be his seventh victim. He may end up her first. And it's basically about this girl named Ruth Carver who gets kidnapped by this man and she is taken to the remote riding cabin deep in the Blue Ridge Mountains. Um, when he unblindfolds her she's face to face with her captor but she escapes into the wilderness so it kind of becomes like a chase and a, you know, a game of survival. So it says, back home they call her ruthless. They had no idea just how right they are. I thought this sounded really creepy and it's also pretty darn short. So I think I could do it during a readathon. And that was $1.79. <sighs> I'm so sorry. I swear I was a lot more positive the first time I filmed this. But now I'm just like, I'm burning out real fast. So... I'm sorry, but it's just getting real old. Next we have The Smell of Other People's Houses by Bonnie Sue Hitchcock. It says four very different lives are about to become entangled. Ruth has a secret that she can't have forever. Dora wonders if she can ever truly escape where she comes from. Alice can't bring herself to leave the life she's always known. Hank and his brothers decide it's safer to run away. They live in Alaska on the cold edge of America, where each one must find the strength, courage, and heart to survive. Um, this book is about people who try to save each other and how sometimes when they least expect it, they succeed. And it was fairly short. It was really popular on booktube about a year or two ago, so I decided to finally bite the bullet and pick it up. Um, and I didn't realize how tiny it was, so this could easily be another readathon book. Um, so this was 223. Sorry. I need to hydrate. Next is Scarlet by A.C. Gohan, I think that's how you say it. So this is a Robin Hood retelling, and it says she is a thief, a liar, a killer, and she will stop at nothing to defend her people. Scarlet is good at keeping secrets. To the young people of Nottingham, she's Will Scarlet, the young lad who protects those who cannot protect themselves. To Robin Hood and his band of thieves, she's a girl with a tongue as sharp as knives, but no one knows the truth about Scarlet's life before Nottingham, not even Rob, whose quick smiles have the rare power to unsettle her. And when someone from her past comes hurling back into her life, everything she's fought for is suddenly at risk, including her life. And this was 2.23. My jaw hurts. Um, next we have Frost Like Night by Sarah Rash, which is book three in the Snow Like Ashes trilogy. Um, I have the other two books over there and I wanted to start the series in 2019 so I decided to pick up the third book just so I have them all. Um, yeah, so now I do. Uh, and this was 2.23. Next we have The Starlit Wood which is an anthology of fairy tale retellings. Um, there's Shauna McGuire, Jeffrey Ford, Naomi Novik, Elliot D. Bodard. Marjorie Lou, Garth Nix, Catherine M. Valenti, and more. Um, edited by Dominic Paris Parisian and Nava Wolf. And can we just appreciate how pretty this book is? It is gorgeous. So yeah, this is just a bunch of fairy tales. Once upon a time in the desert in a tower on a spaceship in the other country. So I'm pretty excited. Shauna McGuire. Yes. Oh. Naomi Novik. She actually wrote that one series. And she's... Oh, okay. I know what I'm talking about. Um, this was 377. This is the last book that I've actually picked up and read the synopsis for. So if we can get through this, we can get through anything. Next we have In Sight of Stars by Gay Polizner. 
It says to find the stars, you have to face the dark. And I thought this was a really pretty cover as well. Um, it's sunflower yellow underneath. It's beautiful. It says, you know what? Basically, it's about this boy who is really close to his father. They make regular trips to the art museum. But once his father dies, he starts to spiral. Um, and he's forced to live with his mom. Um, he meets this girl named Sarah in his art class. And he makes him, she makes him very happy. Um, an act of betrayal sends him reeling and he lands in a psychiatric hospital where he undergoes therapy to go over the pieces of his life that were real and what wasn't real. Um, so it's told in alternate timelines leading up to the event that gets him committed and so on and so forth. So I'm always down for a good mental health slash illness book. Um, so this was 447? Yeah, 447. Next we have The Wicked Deep by Shea Earnshaw and this has been floating around booktube a lot lately and I decided to finally just pick it up. Um, it's really beautiful. The cover is really gorgeous. Um, oh wow. Andre is very gorgeous too. Oh they go all the way around. That's so pretty. Um, so yeah. Struggles. I'm actually super pleased by the condition all the books are in. So while there's so much I'm irritated about, condition is not one of them. So this is about the Swan sisters who arrived in Sparrow, Oregon in 1822. The oldest had long auburn, auburn locks, full lips, and a sharp jaw. The middle sister boasted soft waves of hair and bright full moon eyes. And the youngest was the plainest of the three with smaller features and hair that twisted into the tumbling braid. Each was beautiful and each was misunderstood, and a year later the townspeople executed them for crimes of witchcraft, placing a curse on the small town of Sparrow. A curse that was never broken until now, perhaps. When? Okay, there are a couple pages that are like crumpled up in here that I gotta fix. Hello? Can we? Um. Penny has accepted. Penny Talbot has accepted the fate of her town, but this year, on the eve of the sisters' return, a boy arrives unaware of the danger he has just stumbled into. Mistrust and lies spread quickly through the old, through the salty, rain-soaked streets. Townspeople will turn against one another, and Penny and Bo will suspect the other of hiding things, hiding things, and death will come swiftly to those who cannot resist the call of the sisters. Now, for a brief time each summer, the sisters return, stealing the bodies of three troubled girls so that they may seek the revenge. Ooh, this sounds interesting. I'm intrigued. This cover is beautiful. I'm in love with it. Stickers. I'm gonna get those later. Next, we- I have a lot of beautiful hardcovers in here. Next, we have Rain the Earth by A.C. Gohan. Um, Sacrifice Secrets, Magic That Will Shape the World. This is the Elemente novel. This is in really good condition. It doesn't even have an overstock mark on it. This is like brand freaking new. I even heard a spine crack. It just came underneath. That's because it's Bloomsbury. Bloomsbury always has plain covers, I feel like. <sighs> Hello, Sarah J. Mass Books. Um, so it says, she is a daughter of the desert and she has magic in her blood. Shalia's people are desperate to end the devastating war that has been raging for years with the adjoining kingdom. Willing to trade her freedom for the safety of her family, Shalia agrees to an arranged marriage with the King of the Bonelands, even though it means leaving behind everything she's ever known. In her strange new country, magic is outlawed and the Elemente, those who control earth, air, fire, and water, are traitors, subject to torture or worse. Before she is even crowned, Shalia discovers that she can bend the earth to her will. Trapped between her husband's irrational hatred of the Elemente and a dangerous rebellion led by her own brother, Shalia must harness the power and make an impossible choice. Save her family, save the Elemente, or save herself. And that sounds very interesting. It's kind of giving me like Wrath and the Dawn vibes, to be honest. Uh, so yeah. This was... Oh, The Wicked Deep was 447. Um, and this was only... Wait, is this for real? This was only 265. And this is like the newest one. That's like the most brand new one I have in the box. Next is literally one of the most beautiful books I've ever seen. And that is After Alice by Gregory, Mag oh, Gregory Maguire. Like, look at this. 
Wait, 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 what? Look at that. It's like a, oh my lanta, this is beautiful. This is so pretty, I love this. So, another Alice in Wonderland retelling. Oh, it's got decorative edges. I am so in love with this book. It's so beautiful. So, this says, Down the rabbit hole where the adventure where adventures await. When Alice toppled down the rabbit hole 150 years ago, she found a wonderland as rife with inconsistent rules and abrasive egos as the world she left behind. But what of the world? How did 1860s Oxford react to Alice's disappearance? Okay. Ada, a friend of Alice's mentioned briefly in Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, is off to visit her friend but arrives a moment too late and tumbles down the rabbit hole herself. Ada brings to Wonderland her own imperfect apprehension of cause and effect as she embarks on an odyssey to find Alice and see her safely home from the surreal world below the world. The, rat, the white rabbit, the Cheshire cat, the bloodthirsty queen of hearts, drool and imperious... Droll and, and imperious as always, interrupt their mad tea party to, su to suggest a conundrum. If Eurydice can ever be returned to the arms of Orpheus, or if Lazarus can be raised from the tomb, perhaps Alice can be returned to life? In any case, everything that happens next is after Alice. That was the most confusing synopsis I've ever read in my life, but it's a beautiful book, so if I don't, <laughs> if I didn't buy it for that. Okay, there's a little bit of water damage on the, on the back spine. Or on the back dust jacket. But and this was the most expensive thing, which was five fifty nine. And finally y'all are gonna yell at me for this, but I have a new copy of Empire of Storms by Sarah J. Mass. I couldn't bear with the death of my other one up there because I got water damage. Um so yeah. I bought a new copy. Um so this is book five in the Throne of Glass series. If you don't know what Throne of Glass is, you should just read it. Um, so had to get a new copy because my babies. I'll just annotate the damaged one and keep this one nice and new. It's literally in brand new condition except for the overstock mark. So yeah, that, that was all the books I got. I might email them or just go on the website and see if they have the exclusive edition of Tower Dawn and maybe place the order when I go to order some Christmas presents or something. I don't freaking know. But thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and like them or if you plan to read them, etc, etc. So I hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time.